Hi friends, uh, this is Pastor Veronica here, and um, we're going to be starting sort of a routine of um, having sort of something every day of the week. And so uh, last night I read a story to some of our littlest members, and today I want to share with you a devotion from one of my favorite books. Um, it's called Velvet Elvis. Repainting the Christian Faith, and it's by Rob Bell. If you're looking for a copy, it might look a little something like this, although I hope if you are buying yourself a brand new copy of this book that it does not look quite as beat up as mine. Um, as you can see, there's things written in the margins and um, things sort of written all over, pages highlighted. Um, so this book was something that I did actually as a Bible study or book group um, when I was in seminary and I was fortunate enough to work with a group of uh, young women my age and um, we each took a chapter and we each sort of led the group in one of the chapters and so um, this is the introduction to the group um, or to the book but again it's called Velvet Elvis Repainting the Christian Faith and it's written by Rob Bell sort of one of his first books if you've heard of him so um, I want to read to you a little bit um, of, the, uh, of the beginning intro to this. And I thank you for joining me. And just know, um, as always, our content will be available after the live feed is over. And then um, you'll also be able to um, find it on YouTube and on our church website. So um, this is Velvet Elvis by Rob Bell. In my basement behind some bikes and suitcases and boxes, sits a Velvet Elvis, a genuine bought by the side of the road Velvet Elvis. And to say that this painting captures the king in all his glory would be an understatement. It's not the young Elvis, the thin one with the slicked back hair in those black and white concert photos in which he's playing a guitar that's not plugged in. And it's not the old Elvis, the big one in the shiny cape singing to old women in Hawaii. My painting is the pre-donut Elvis. A touch of blue in the hair, the tall white collar that suggests one of those polyester jumpsuits, and those lips. If you stare long enough, you might even see them quiver. But I think the best part of my Velvet Elvis is the lower left-hand corner, where the artist simply wrote a capital R and then a period. R. Because when you're this good, you don't even have to write your whole name. What if, when he was done with his masterpiece, R had announced there was no more need for anyone to paint because he had just painted the ultimate painting? What if R had held a press conference, unveiled his painting, and then called on all painters everywhere to put down their brushes, insisting that since he had painted the ultimate painting, there was simply no need for any of them to continue their work? We would say that R had lost his mind. We say this because we instinctively understand that art has to, in some way, keep going, keep exploring, keep arranging, keep shaping and forming, and bringing in new perspectives. For thousands of years, followers of Jesus, like artists, have understood that we have to keep going, exploring what it means to live in harmony with God and each other. The Christian faith tradition is filled with change and growth and transformation. Jesus took part in this process by calling people to rethink faith and the Bible and hope and love and everything else, and by inviting them into the endless process of working out how to live as God created us to live. The challenge for Christians, then, is to live with great passion and conviction, remaining open and flexible, aware that this life is not the last painting. Times change. God doesn't. But times do. We learn and grow, and the world around us shifts, and the Christian faith is alive only when it is listening, morphing, innovating, letting go of whatever has gotten in the way of Jesus, and embracing whatever will help us be more and more the people God wants us to be. There are endless examples of this ongoing process, so I'll describe just one. Around 500 years ago, a man named Martin Luther raised a whole series of questions about the painting the church was presenting to the world. He insisted that God's grace could not be purchased with money or good deeds. 
He wanted everyone to have their own copy of the Bible in a language they could read. He argued that everyone had a divine calling on their lives to serve God, not just priests who had jobs in churches. This concept was revolutionary for the world at that time. He was articulating earth-shattering ideas for his listeners, and they heard him. And something big, something historic happened. Things changed. Thousands of people connected with God in ways they hadn't before. But that wasn't the end of it. Luther was taking his place in a long line of people who never stopped rethinking and repainting the faith, shedding unnecessary layers, and at the same time rediscovering essentials that had been lost. Luther's work was part of what came to be called the Reformation. Because of this movement, the churches he was speaking against went through their own process of rethinking and repainting, making significant changes as a result. And this process hasn't stopped. It can't. In fact, Luther's contemporaries used a very specific word for this endless, absolutely necessary process of change and growth. They didn't use the word reformed. They used the word reforming. This distinction is crucial. They knew that they and others hadn't gotten it perfect forever. They knew that the things they said and did and wrote and decided would need to be revisited, rethought, and reworked. So that is just a portion of the introduction of uh, Rob Bell's Velvet Elvis repainting the Christian faith. Believe it or not, that's just the introduction to this, and it is pretty perfect timing for us. We are rethinking the way the church works because it's not safe for us to be meeting in person the way we always have. I'm certain that um, that most of us didn't know when we were younger that we would end up finding ways to be together as church in a setting like this, where the pastor would be on one side of the screen and the parishioners on another. Nor did we imagine that we would have people tune in from all over, from their living rooms or from their cell phones at work or wherever they are to participate in any sort of church activity. It's remarkable the changes that technology has made available to us and it's a little bit challenging to keep up. And I think that this introduction, this reading is sort of perfect for us right now. This process hasn't stopped and it can't. And maybe, just maybe, when we are forced to find new ways of doing things and learning how to be church in a changing world, that, that it's the Holy Spirit reminding us that the process hasn't stopped and that we are constantly and actively reforming. It's a pretty heavy thing to think about. And it's a pretty amazing thing to think about, too. So maybe you can think about that tonight as you get ready for bed and settle down for the night. Maybe some of you are just sitting down for dinner, or maybe you are already in your pajamas, teeth brushed, ready to go to bed. But as you go to sleep tonight, as you wrap up your day, maybe think about the ways in which you are constantly reforming and growing in your faith as the world around you changes. So I would invite you to just take a moment and, and pray with me. Let us pray. Holy God, the world you created is constantly changing. It is changing rapidly around us, and those changes are so incredibly hard to keep up with, and we struggle and fight them, and we face them head on, and sometimes we cower from them in fear, but we cannot stop the changing around us. And so we know that through your grace and love, you have given us, you have given us the ability to be constantly reforming. So in all of the ways that we look at repainting the Christian faith and all of the ways that we are rethinking what it means to be church in the world today and all the ways that we are as individuals reforming, be with us. Help us to know that you are there in every step of the way. 
and guide us to leave room for the work of the Holy Spirit in every moment of reforming that we face. In your name we pray. Amen. And now may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night to all of you. And I look forward to sharing another devotion with you again later this week. Good night.